Hey guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel. For those of you trying to get started in film photography, let's pick a camera. So in this video, what I want to do is talk about selecting your first film camera. I'm going to just kind of go over the different uh, form factors and kind of like categories of cameras. And I'm really just going to focus on 35 millimeter and 120. You know, somebody's just kind of getting started out. It's very likely that uh, you're going to either select the 35 millimeter camera or a 120. So when it comes to selecting a film camera, you literally have a hundred plus years of, of cameras to choose from. Okay, everything from a Kodak Brownie, which is literally a light tight box and uh, with a lens on one side and the film on the back side and the lens controls the light and exposes the film for you know for the proper amount of time and that's the essence of what a camera is it's a light tight box and of course you know since the brownie and since those very basic cameras there's uh, you know years and years and decades of uh, of evolution and improvements and as somebody that's uh, looking to get into film photography you've got tons and tons of choices the great thing about film photography in general is that you can get really really good cameras cameras that uh, way back in the day were like premium the best professional quality cameras you can get them for pennies on the dollar nowadays because you know digital has, has taken over but good for you if you're looking at getting into film photography you can uh, pick up a professional you know a great Nikon or, or you know Canon or several other uh, brand names for not a lot of money you know relative to, to their digital counterparts so let's take a look at what the different types of cameras are and hopefully it'll help you choose There's your compacts. This is an example of a little uh, Olympus compact. These cameras were really popular back in the day. They're a little pricey, so you can kind of call this a premium uh, compact. There are cheapo, we'll call this guy a cheapo compact. You can literally buy this camera for five bucks, uh, swap meet, or maybe 15 or 20 bucks on eBay. It's got a nice lens on it. So, you know, premium compact, cheapo compact, they'll both get you in there they both take nice images this is a fixed lens 35 millimeter rangefinder okay this is the whole rangefinder system and these cameras don't look through the through the lenses taking the picture it looks through this rangefinder there's pluses and minuses to that um, and different schools of thought on that I love the rangefinder uh, format myself uh, think of like a Fuji X100 series. Uh, you know, this is a fixed lens. The lens doesn't come off. It takes 35 millimeter film and nice cameras with really great optics. Almost every camera maker out there made some type of camera like this. This is what you would call a premium rangefinder. They're not an inexpensive way to get into film photography, but if uh, if you have the means, they're really really enjoyable cameras to use. Again, rangefinder, but the difference with this one is removable lens. This is a single lens reflex that lets you compose your image through the the lens that's actually taking the photo. As you look through the through the viewfinder, you got you know the pentaprism that folds up the light, and you can see what, what the lens is actually seeing. Okay, you can get into one of these cameras for really, really cheap, and these were premium cameras. They're really, really well made, and they have great lenses. I mean, you can see how beautiful the optics are on this particular lens. Olympus is one of my faves, and I, and I can't help but show off my F3. It's also a really, um, uh, you know, capable camera, tough as nails. These things last forever. These are a little bit older from the 70s and 80s, right? And this is a more modern uh, SLR that looks a lot like a DSLR. If you look in the back there, there's that tiny LCD window that's used really for menu choices and to customize the, uh, the camera's uh, options. But as you can see, it's compatible with modern flashes. This is a VR lens. It's compatible with a modern VR lens. Um, and, you know, and everything works just like it would on a, on a Nikon digital camera. So this is an example of a newer film camera that is compatible 
with uh, you know modern uh, equipment. I'll also say that the F6 in particular, and it's it's kind of unique in film cameras because this camera is compatible with just about every lens that Nikon ever made. I mean, we're talking about uh, lenses from the 1960s and 50s right on up to 2020, you know, their latest glass. It does everything really, really well. And it's, uh, it's a camera that if you're kind of into that DSLR style of shooting, but you want to try out film, this is a great option to get you going in film photography if you have like a bunch of modern uh, Nikon glass or uh, whatnot. Uh, this will give you the option to shoot some film. So let's talk about uh, medium format now. Uh, medium format camera, this is a, a nice example of a, a, a TLR, what's called a twin lens reflex. You look through this lens, the camera takes the, the photo through this lens. Okay, great optics on these cameras. Again, fixed lenses. There are some models like the Mamiya C330 that has um, glass that you can uh, actually remove. They, they have telephoto and wide angle lenses uh, for, their, for their cameras this Roly and like a Yasika Mat 124 or 124G, those have fixed lenses. Those are really popular uh, TLR cameras. As you can see, there's a cool little uh, pop-up hood and uh, for critical focusing, there's a, even like a magnifier there that folds away nice and neatly. And, and typically there's a neck strap here and then you hold it down and look down at the viewfinder uh, holding this at waist level. And again, this is just how every camera was. Uh, superb optics even com when compared to cameras of today. Super sharp, super saturated, contrasty photos. It doesn't look like a, an outdated camera or outdated image at all. I mean, very, very nice images that come out of this camera. This is another one of your choices. This is a premium TLR, cheapest one of these that you could probably find that's functioning, probably about 600 bucks, maybe 800 bucks. Um, and then they go up from there, uh, depending on the lens, 2.8, 3.5. This is a 3.5, so it's on the it's on the lower end, but it's um, you know it still takes phenomenal images. So another type of camera is your folder, and just like the TLRs, the folding cameras were super popular back in the day. There was a, a point in time where nearly every camera in production was a folding camera or the vast majority of them were folding cameras. And it's pretty obvious why, they, why they're called folding cameras, because when that lens is tucked away, they're nice and flat. This can fit in a cargo pocket today with absolutely no problem, coat pocket. And uh, they took a really, really large uh, negative. The, the, the film negative was like from here to here. So it's a really good size film negative, which gives you tons of resolution and the optics on this particular camera and on a lot of them uh, of from this day were top notch optics, just like the TLR I was talking about a second ago. Uh, this particular camera is a Mamiya M645 1000S. Um, this camera is a like a system camera, a modular camera, you could call it. It has a removable hood. This is very similar to um, what I just showed you with the TLR. You got the pop-up hood uh, that you can just hold down at the waist level and look down in there. There's also the little magnifier that'll help you achieve critical focusing, the little pop-up magnifier that happens right there. Um, but uh, this is a system camera in as much as the lens is removable, the, the hood is removable and can be interchanged with an SLR type hood that's got a, a you know, pentaprism there. Some of these uh, format cameras will have removable backs that hold uh, different types of film that you can interchange uh, mid-roll. You know, so there's a, a lot of lot of neat stuff that can happen. When these cameras are a little bit bulky. They can get really heavy, especially if you get into some of the larger formats. This is a 645. This is a six by 4.5 centimeter, so it's not terribly big. But if you get to a six by seven, even you know, or six by nine or something like that, then they get to, they get really big. Okay, but anyway, just just to give you an example of what types of medium format cameras are. So this is a again a medium format. It uses 120 film, which is roll film, versus a cartridge film, which is a 35 millimeter. Their specialty cameras. This little guy here. It takes panoramic images. This is a kind of unique camera. It, it has this whole rotating lens system that 
that if, you, if you're quick enough, you can catch it sweeping across the frame there. But anyway, specialty cameras. Uh, in film, there's 3D cameras with, with several lenses in the front. There's a lot of different specialty cameras. There was a lot of experimentation that happened uh, with film photography. So there's no shortage of, of unique, quirky cameras that you can find out there. Now, some cameras have light meters built in and some don't. For a long time, this was not a problem. Sunny 16 is a method by which you can set your exposure without using a light meter. It's pretty simple, actually. You simply set your uh, shutter speed on your camera to the box speed of your film. ASA 100 film equals 1 one hundredth of a second. ASA 400 speed film, 1 four hundredth or as close as you can get to that on your camera. You set it for uh, 1 four hundredth of a second. And as you can see on the chart, if it's a sunny day, you just use F16 on and on. It's actually a pretty foolproof method and I use it all the time. Uh, some of these cameras had really sophisticated charts on the back of the camera that tried to really account for almost any given lighting situation and to give you an idea what you should what your settings should be. Okay guys, so hopefully you got something out of this. Me personally, I like simple cameras. Uh, I don't really care for cameras that much that have a bunch of settings and bells and whistles. I like a, a very uh, easy to use camera that just kind of leaves all the settings up to me as the as the photographer. Um, that's that can be like something like this. I, I like these big aperture fixed lens um, uh, 35 millimeter cameras. I've got about, I don't know, about four or five of them sitting over there. Um, fixed lens, can't remove the lens. You can see how beautiful that glass is. It's a big old aperture. Uh, range finder, very easy to use, just very basic camera. Um, in, in terms of removable lens cameras, I, I like uh, range finder again, my personal preference. Some people really like SLRs, but I, I really like uh, my, my Leica cameras. Um, they have superb optics, uh, just gorgeous large uh, viewfinders, and uh, they're just, to me, they're the most uh, uh, fun cameras to use. That being said, I love SLRs as well. This is one of my all-time favorite cameras, the Nikon F3. It's got the yellow filter on there right now for black and white. But uh, yeah, a camera like this um, to me is is fun to use and engaging in a different way than the range finders are. I like these big format cameras as well. Okay, so suffice it to say, and you know the Nikon FE is one of my all time favorite SLRs as well. So all that being said, uh, at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. It's all about what you like, what you feel comfortable uh, using. And in a big way, it's also what you, um, what the given situation may uh, may dictate. Uh, obviously, there's some things that rangefinder cameras just can't do. Uh, macro work, any serious macro work, you can. There's like close-up adapters or whatever, but you know, uh, serious macro work is definitely going to be an SLR. Any you know anything with a long telephoto lens, and and sometimes I'm just in the mood for to use one of these SLRs because they're really like fine machines. And they're fun to use. So, and I appreciate the, the engineering, the craftsmanship. It's all about what you feel comfortable with, what you have fun with. And the good news is that film cameras are so inexpensive, relatively speaking, that you can have more than one. I mean, I've got like 40. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not saying do that. But, uh, you know, if you enjoy film photography, get you a, you know, a little compact camera. Get a, uh, an SLR that you can explore different lenses with. Um, you know, if, if you like, uh, if, if you, if you want to spend the money, get a Leica system, uh, or there's other good rangefinder systems out there. But anyway, that is a wrap. Thank you for tuning in. This is Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Peace.